Hi, this is John Thrace, head of and Psychotherapist. This week, Tara Psychology Post Pasha Devorim and Tisha Bar is titled Sticks and Stones May Break My Bones, But Words Will Never Hurt Me. And I want to ask, is this really true? I mean, it's a very, it's an often common, it's a commonly used phrase, the idea that physical action does more damage, behavioral interactions can do more damage than the way that we interact with other people. Whereas words, the way that we talk to each other, insults perhaps, has, has no effect. It's something which passes. It doesn't penetrate. If we look at it from a psychological perspective, we know that this is not true. It's a fallacy. We know that there's that the words can be so damaging and long-lasting and can have such a deep, penetrating, emotional effect that, in fact, it really is sticks and stones may break my bones in the sense that actions and behaviors can have damage, but it's perhaps is more easily repaired or and, and, and is, you're able to repair the damage, but words will, will forever hurt, will always hurt. And it's a lot longer process to be able to recover from the damage of, of damage of the words, the insults that a person says to you, and the, how it penetrates and really damages a person on an emotional and psychological level. So let's look at this in the sense from what we can learn from this week's parasha and in preparation for Tisha B'av. Because in this week's parasha, in Pasha's Devarim, we read again about the story, the account of the Miraculum, that the Miraculum came back and said, Lash and Hara against Eretz Yisrael. And we learn from the Gemara in Erechim, th- at this point, the Bnei Yisrael were, were decreed to go into Golos. And the Gemara learns out that the punishment of Lash and Hara is, is, is so great, and it's it's greater in a sense than Gilei Raya, Gilei Raya, and Shavich Because this was the the point of the miraculum was the first Tisha B'av, that the Bnei Yisrael cried out, and Hashem said, if you cry now, this is going to be a crying for generations. And indeed, the first base of English was destroyed, and the second base of English was, was destroyed on Tisha B'av. But the point, the moment where it all first started, and it first began, was the, the account of the miraculum, the Lashon Hara, that the, that the miraculum said on against Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, the Gemara in Erechim says that, yet that Lashon Hara is greater than these three of put together of of a Vodazar, Gilearas, and Shvichas Domim, of a, uh, idolatry, incest, and murder. But also, the Gemara in Yuma discusses the destruction of the first base of Mikdash and the second base of Mikdash and says that the first base of Mikdash was destroyed because of these three Averas of idolatry, incest, and murder. And the second base of Mikdash was destroyed because of Sinas Chena. And the Gemara learns out that the, the Avera of Sinas Chena, of baseless hatred, is greater and more severe than these three Averas put together, because the the Golos of the first base of Mikdash was limited to only 70 years, whereas the Golos and the exile of the second base of Mikdash is ongoing, and it's still going, we're still suffering because of it. So we see from, from these two Gemaras, of the Gemara in Erech and Yuma, that takes the, the we learn that the idea of Lashon Hara and Sinas Chinam of being greater and more severe than the punish, the Averas of and and I want to understand what is the what is the difference. We see that there is a quantitative difference, quantitative difference in the sense that the exile, the goddess is still ongoing, and a qualitative difference as, as well. What 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 is the difference in the nature of these of sinas chinam and and lashon hara? So one possible explanation is that lashon hara and and sinas chinam are relate to a, a spiritual damage, a spiritual and psychological damage. That if we see the the Averas of Gilio Arias and Avodah Zarah Shvichas Domin, by nature they can, we can say they are rooted in a physical bodily desire and urge, and anything which is based in on a, on a, a, a physical on a physical level, is usually it's something which is fleeting, it's temporary, it passes, and therefore if the Avera is something which is temporary, so too and it's limited so too is the punishment. And therefore, we see that it only, the punishment of the, and the Golos only lasted for 70 years. The punishment, the Avera and the punishment are, are, are equal in the sense that they are balanced, that they are rooted in a, in a temporary, physical, and a limited uh, desire. Therefore, that equates to a punishment which is limited to 70 years. Whereas, avoid, um, Sinas Chinam, baseless hatred, and Lashon Hara, as we said, we, as we said, we can interpret them as having emotional and psychological or, or spiritual um, ramifications. It's, it's, and this is something which cannot be limited. It's, it's indefinite. It's something which cannot be limited and put within a certain 
time frame or a certain something which is quantifiable. And therefore, because the Avera is indefinite and unlimited in a sense, and to the extent that it's so pen it penetrates to a deeper level, to a deeper level and it, and it has more severe ramifications and an effect on the person, therefore the punishment itself is indefinite as well. And we are still we are still suffering because of the Lash and Hara of, of the of the Miraglim in the Midbar and also because of the Sinas Chinon of the second base of Migdash. And if we look at this from a psychological perspective, we can see, we can try to understand this in the sense of the difference between perhaps a behavioral therapy or a psychodynamic therapy. That something which is based as an Avera or, or, or we could say, or a, a, a mental health difficulty which is rooted in the body, it's often something which is seen as perhaps a, a maladaptive behavior, a bad habit, and something which can be changed, it can be recognized, and it can be identified, and through usually what is a short-term therapy, a behavioral therapy, you can try to correct this maladaptive behavior. And it's something which is usually more limited in this time frame. Whereas if we look at a, a deeper emotional psychological damage, a, a more psycho a deeper injury on an emotional level, it's something which requires perhaps a psychodynamic approach, which is usually something which is longer, has a long-term therapeutic process, which requires a greater level of analysis and a, a, a more extensive process, a more extensive therapeutic process. So we can see this difference, perhaps, um, but is, is, a, 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 is a, also a therapeutic difference between a short or behavioral therapeutic approach to a long-term psychodynamic, psychoanalytical analytical approach. Alternatively, we can also say that the in the, the Gemara in Yuma tells us that in the second base of English, the Bnei Yisrael actually were involved in Torah and mitzvahs, whereas, but they, were, they didn't acknowledge or, or they didn't identify or recognize that they were falling in this area of Sinas Chinam, in the sense that they were engaged in a life of Torah and mitzvahs. And this can be seen from a psychological perspective as a, as a confirmation bias. There's this self or uh, there's a self-justification and self-righteousness that they saw they were living a good life, they were doing the right thing. They were, people can say, I, I, I do the right thing, I try my best, I don't hurt people, I do this and I do this, and they list all the good things that they do. And this could be a self-righteousness, a self-justification, and it's also a confirmation bias that they only uh, zoom in and look at the good aspect, the positive aspects of their character and the positive aspects of how they live their life, but they are blinded to, the, to, the, to where they are falling short or to their, to their defaults and their mistakes. And this confirmation bias of the self-righteousness means that a person is not able to own up to their mistakes. And the Bnei Yisrael, therefore, in the second base of Migdash, were just focused on the Torah and that they did, and this prevented them from acknowledging that they were falling short in Sinas Chinam, and therefore they would, were not able to acknowledge the need to do Teshuva, and therefore they, the, the punishment is greater because they weren't, they weren't able to bring themselves to do Teshuva. So we see from a psychological perspective as well, this idea of a confirmation bias and self-justification that prevents a person from acknowledging and realizing the areas where they are falling short and their defaults. So as we come up to Tisha B'av, and we are still in the midst of this punishment of the second base of Nikdash, we need to, and uh, the, the punishment of Lashon Hara and Sinas Chinam, we want to try to acknowledge our defaults, acknowledge our mistakes, and be prepared to own up to them, and be pre prepared to try to do Teshuvah, and hopefully with that, the base of Nikdash will be rebuilt. Have a great Shabbos, and keep on. Well.